phone waiting you know to just discuss this with us so in 2019 the then minister of lands and natural resources minister harry kalaba addressed the issue of mining in Lower zambezi during the reign of the pf the decision to grant a mining license to mine copper mine to, to mine copper in Lower zambezi was made by cabinet mr kalaba did confirm that he had written to cabinet recommending the granting of the mine license which zema was strongly against but mr kalaba disregarded zema's advancements on this. Government said the embattled open pit mining project in the heart of the Lower Zambezi National Park will go ahead, but under strict adherence to measures set by the Zambia Environmental Management Agency, Zema, to limit damage to the environment to a minimum. Green Economy and Environment Minister Collins Zinzovo said that the courts dismissed an appeal to stop the proposed large scale open pit mine to begin operations in Lower Zambezi. Government is only left with the option of monitoring the situation and to ensure the developer operates within strict conditions. So some stakeholders say that government has the right to cancel the mining license, all right, in, for Lower Zambezi. And this morning, to discuss this, we do have Mr. Robert Chimambo, who is an environmentalist. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chimambo. Welcome to the Diamond Breakfast. So, as an environmentalist, what are your sentiments towards the setting up of an open pit mine in Los Angeles? Yeah. Uh, good morning. Good morning, my dear lady. Uh, sorry, I, I can't. I haven't been managed to to get to your studio because of traffic. Now, uh, this is very very important because I listened to your discussion, your colleagues yesterday. There's a lot of uh, lack of information, and uh, in fact, even misinformation. So please, Zambians, listen very carefully to what I'm about to say, because I was the, in 2011, I was the prime mover to start the action to stop mining in Lower Zambezi. So it is important the Zambians understand the genesis, where this started, and what we civil society did, and all this confusion that is arisen. In the same vein, there are two issues Zambians I want to hold in, in mind. One is the constitution, the, both the old constitution and 2016 constitution. Mm -hmm. That is where we civil society stand. The constitution is categorical. It says we shall protect the environment for current and future generations, protect the environment for current and future generations. That is our stand as a <clears throat> society. Now, the second one is we must hold these people we put in the offices to account, even if I took an office. There are four people now who we should hold to account over this Lower Zambezi fiasco. One of them is Uba Smith, uh, 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 Honorable Uba uh, Samusa. He was the Minister of Mines and or Environment at that time. And Uba refused this thing, the mining. He was removed. And that is what you see. Anybody who opposes this thing, the PF government removed. And they quickly brought in uh, Mr. Kalaba. Kalaba was brought in specifically to do what? To approve that, uh, that uh, thing, that uh, lowers and base mining. It's all there in his letter. I will address that in a minute. The other two people is the current one. John Musumuko and uh, his minister, what is his name? Uh, the other guy. The, the, the one who wrote now this letter in May 2021, just a few, a few months or weeks, before the elections of 2021. These must be held to account for what is happening now. Now, let me go back to 2011. Now, in 2011, colleagues of mine, two or three of them of European extraction, Zambians, they came to me and said, Robbie, do you know what's happening in Lower Zambia? They want to start mining. If people at uh, this uh, Australian company, they start to want to mine, and they've started the process of EIA. So I said, ah, mining in a national park at Yah. So we said, okay, fine. Let me uh, uh, speak to my colleagues. So what I did now, as, a, as in my own capacity, but also as chairman of Charipas, Charimbana River Headwaters Conservation Trust, I went to report to our colleagues. At that time, uh, uh, CBNRM, Community Based Natural Resources Management, was having regular meetings with a group of civil society to discuss the issues of environment and development. 
So I went to report to them. I said, gentlemen, we are seated here. This is what I've been informed is happening. They want to start mining here in lower the base. So a decision was made that, no, 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 let's get involved. That early. So a group of us, we went to see them and they told us they are going to have these meetings in the, on site, you know, public here. And our people went there. That those guys had uh, spoken so much against civil society. I remember that uh, even the owner of uh, was against that uh, Royal Highness Mukamambo uh, uh, against that. Mm. So our people went there to give their views, and we rejected that thing. Okay. Finally, when Zema had collected all the information, they issued a letter to this you know, Zambezi mining people to reject that mining. And let's understand this very clearly. The Constitution protecting the environment for current and future generations. To do that, it has put in place legislation. Zema, Wama, uh, Town and Country Planning, these are the ones that ensure that our the environment Mr. is Chimambo. protected for future Mr. and current generations. Mr. Chimambo, on the same now, issue of... Zema Mr. Chimambo. said, you know, now, the Minister of uh, Environment must get his advice from the, the Zema and its board. These are the people who know the issues, who must be advised the minister. Mr. Chimambo, uh, so on that same issue... They are Mr. The Chimambo, minister. can you hear us? Okay? Mr. Chimambo, hello? Yes. Yes. On the same issue of the, the supreme law of the land, the constitution being uh, a major play into helping and sustaining the environment. Now, our next question is based on just that. Do you think there's much that has been addressed with regards to the carbon emissions that will come from mining in the laws and busy, as well as uh, displacement of some uh, animals and also the plant yeah. life? Do you think this has been addressed enough? Oh, you know, uh, if you allowed me to explain this, because what you are doing, uh, uh, that's the very reason why uh, the environmental uh, uh, impact assessment was rejected. It is the issues we are talking about. There are a whole host of things. That area has, is, is exotic. Biodiversity, wildlife, a lot of things will be damaged. Mm. That's why it was rejected. So okay. now let me go quickly to Kalava. Mr. Kalava was advised, and the, the people who the constitution gives him to be advised, is Zema. Zema said no. But in his letter, Mr. Karawai said you have consulted. Who did he consult? Did he go to Bakhati and consult a witch doctor to say, no, go ahead with it? The people who he must consult are Zema. And <coughs> Zema had said no. Okay. So now, Mr. Chimambo, what are some of, uh, are there any advantages that could possibly come up of setting up mining activities within the Lower Zambezi as an environmentalist? Are there any advantages? Uh, come again? Are there any advantages from setting no. up mining activity within Lower Zambezi? My dear, uh, Zambia has been a mining nation for 120 years. Go to Kabwe. Uh, go to Luansha, go to what advantages are we talking about? Kawe, children are being born with poison in their blood, 5 to 15 parts of lead in their blood, deformities. Yeah? The whole, and that is the point I'm saying. Uh, the, 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 the mining in, a, in a, 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 a fragile environment like that mm. has many imponderables. Many unintended consequences. No, mining is not the way to go. And maybe let's quickly go to what you say, way forward. Yes, we need to wind up. We are running out of yeah. time. Mm. You see, when you begin these things, give time so that we explain to Zambian people properly. So I'm saying now, before I finish, that Musumuko and the Musukwa, they must be held to accountable for that letter they wrote to approve this thing. The, mm. the, the, the EIA... Of, uh, it, it expired a long time ago. What we had sued is, is an injunction to stop the activities. That is what has been in court. But by the very fact that the EIA collapsed, it means even our injunction was an academic exercise. That's why we didn't push it vigorously. 
right? So, so they can't come today mm. and say, just a technicality of not attending court. I say, no, then we have won. They haven't won. The substantive matter, we are never discussed. And that is why I think the minister, the current minister and the president are saying what he says. No, well, hold on. Mm. This thing will look at its merit. So the merits of the fact that the substantive matter, the issue you are raising, comparing wildlife conservation, tourism and all that, and mining, these have not been considered. All right. So Mr. Chimambo, thank you so much for coming through. We'll have to leave it at that, but we'll okay, be able to engage yeah, you even like, in our like other I'm programs saying, so that we can give you more time to, you know, yeah, to yeah, discuss yeah. this as well as to inform us. More time, my dear. All right. So that Zambians, because I'm being confused, I see some other fellow here. Mm. He has written that, you know, I'm the owner of this company and all that. That's not a lie. This thing we understand is from some <clears throat> business in Dubai. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chimambo. We have to leave it at that. Thank you so much for coming through. All right. We're speaking with uh, Mr. Robert Chimambo, an environmentalist and very passionate 